says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to, <laughs> how do we translate authentic? Exercise authority, assume authority, uh, domineer, uh, many, many different translations have been advanced. For those who wish to argue that Paul is trying to address a narrow problem of women who are trying to usurp authority, but not speaking against the proper use of authority, then the verb authenteo, which is really quite rare in the New Testament, it's not the way Paul usually speaks of authority, authenteo really has negative overtones, and that the teach or exercise authority should be taken as one construct. That is to say, what Paul is forbidding is the kind of authoritarian teaching that usurps authority that doesn't rightly belong to the teacher. I do not permit women to teach that way. Which, in that case, does not raise the question, it doesn't address the question of whether women might be permitted to teach without usurping authority, where they have the authority, where they're speaking in an appropriate fashion. What shall we say about this construction? First of all, the verb authenteo in most instances has a neutral or a positive overtone. But there is a handful of instances where you can at least make a case that it can have a negative overtone. Here, however, Kustenberger has gone through a very interesting study. He's worked through instances where you have this sort of construction, the sort, I don't permit this or this, where you have this sort of construction, to see if one of the verbs can have a positive overtone and the other can have a negative overtone. Because all sides acknowledge that teach by itself has a positive overtone. And he insists in all of his research through the relevant literature, they're both either positive or negative. Philip Payne responded and claimed to find three that went in opposite directions. Kirstenberger responded to show that Dr. Payne had misunderstood those three in their context. In my view, having looked through the primary sources myself and reread these articles, Kirstenberger wins that one hands down. Now there's a second issue that you have to face. Is this a prohibition of two things or of one thing? Is this authoritative teaching, get rid of the word authoritarian, it's negative, authoritative teaching or is it teaching or having authority? You can make a case for two categories, but I think it rather misses the point. Because in the New Testament, authority is exercised in the local church, as we see in the following verses. Authority is exercised in the local church, in the first instance, through elders, pastors, overseers, elders, pastors, bishops, three words with one referent, three words that refer to one person, primarily through the teaching of the word. In other words, it's not that I am the pastor and therefore I have the authority by virtue of my position. Rather, the authority is exercised primarily by faithfully teaching and preaching the whole counsel of God. That's why we still continue to say Christ is the head of the church. Do you see? So that although you might refer to two components of all of this, I do not permit to teach or have authority. In fact, the two are tied together in the New Testament. The exercise of authority in the ministerial office does not stand in the first place on status. It stands in the first place on total church submission to the authoritative word of God, to the truth of the gospel, to what Jesus says, to words that will stand for all eternity, do you see, and are rightly and faithfully taught and proclaimed in the congregation. Thank you.